Yeah. You know, Tell us more. Colts and Broncos. Like <laughs> these are two teams that are supposed to be contending for division titles, oh. not be the laughing stock of the NFL. Mm. That's where we are right now with both of these franchises, and those are two winning franchises that have a lot of tradition and, in many cases, a lot of pride. I. I think of a player on the Denver sidelines right now who has to be just burning to get back on the field, and that's our guy Melvin Gordon. Okay. Mm. Javante Williams was not only my number one breakout player of the year yeah. going into this thing, but was also supposed to be the guy in Denver. Melvin Gordon was supposed to fade away towards the midway point of the season. It would be all beyond Javante. Well, Javante's out for the year. Insert Melvin Gordon, who it seems like cannot hang on to a football. He's got mm. issues right now. He had a terrible fumble Sunday against yeah. the Raiders. Deron Harmon knocks it out. But it's not uncommon. This is the last two years. Fumbles lost. And he's had 200 carries less than Dalvin Cook. He's had 200 carries less than Jonathan yeah, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. You go through the footage, and it is like head-scratching. What is up with Melvin Gordon? This guy cannot hold on to the football. And this is not a young player. This is not Tiki Barber needing uh, the Tom Coughlin, hey, high and tight talk. Like, this is Melvin Gordon, who's been in the league for several, several seasons and has had great success. So as I'm showing fumbling footage of Melvin Gordon, I would go back to 2014, all right? 2014, Melvin Gordon is in a game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He's a Wisconsin Badger. Gordon had 144 rushing yards, but lost two fumbles mm -hmm. with about nine minutes left to go in the second mm -hmm. quarter, okay? Melvin Gordon, coach wants to bench him, Gordon begs him, keep me in, keep me in, let me stay in this game. He went on to have an NCAA record, 408 yards on that. Day. He ran for 408 yards. 408 yards. yards. Black shirts want to tackle anybody? Black shirts were not tackling what are we anyone doing? What are we that doing? day. Let me tell you something. 144 <laughs> yards rushing, but two fumbles. Coach wants to pull him. Melvin Gordon's like, give me one more shot. We're at that point in his career right now, I think, where if Melvin Gordon starts coughing up the ball today, it's like, look, we've got other options. We're, mm -hmm. we're not. We're, I think Melvin Gordon has the Melvin Gordon comeback game. I think there's a redemption yeah. story here, and I think he carries the Broncos. Melvin Gordon has to step up, and if you know Melvin Gordon, you know how badly he wants this and does not want to be the reason this team is losing games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what you're saying is a great point. They signed Latavius Murray. Mike Boone was getting some carries above him after he fumbled this past week, so it is kind of put up or shut up time, and I think he will rise to the occasion. And another guy for the Colts who has risen to the occasion is rookie Alec Pierce. He's a wide receiver on the other side of Michael Pittman Jr., and he's starting to come along versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Had his first three receptions of the season, one coming late in the fourth quarter, helping them to win that game. This past week, he goes out there four catches for 80 yards. Matt Ryan's chucking it up in the air, and he's making catches deep down the field. Now, you look at this matchup Thursday night. You have Michael Pittman Jr., like I said, on the other side. Pat Sertain Jr. will probably shadow Michael Pittman Jr., mm. which is going to open it up for Alec Pierce. Matt Ryan threw for over 300 yards in their last game, and yes, it hasn't always been pretty, but he's finding ways to get Alec Pierce the ball. Pierce talked about this week. He said, hey, as I'm coming along, Matt Ryan is building more confidence in me. Not only am I getting more targets in the game, but I'm seeing the ball come my way more in practice. And for a young receiver, that's what you want to hear. Your quarterback having confidence in you, trusting you to get the ball in your hands late in the game, early in the game, but finding it necessary to get you going for the offense to get rolling. Week five, would you ever imagine, like, the Colts season depends on Alec Pierce. So weird. And, you know, day two <laughs> pick out of Cincinnati. You, ne you never you know. know who's going to step up throughout the course of a season. It's been interesting to see Matt Ryan try to figure this out in real time, especially considering the quarterback that we knew and the success that he had with the Falcons. It hasn't really been as smooth, I think, as a lot of people thought it might have gone. They, it was the consistency yeah. that the Colts wanted a quarterback that just hasn't quite delivered. Alec Pierce is one of those um, options for him in the passing game. The two tight ends that he has, I think, are spectacular. And I love a good connection to when you have, like, a big guy like Mo Ali Cox or Jelani Woods. I'm talking 6'7", 250, 6'5", 225. Mm. These guys are huge. They used to play basketball. They're easy targets in the red zone. Matt Ryan has thrown five touchdowns this season, four of which are to the tight end position. This, these guys have to step up in a game like this. This is easy for Frank Reich to look at this within his offense. Frank Reich loves tight ends. He loves to feature them. Yeah. Let's talk about all the tight ends that Frank Reich has been able to feature okay. in his coaching career. When he first started in Indianapolis, you got Dallas Clark. Nice. Then he Dallas goes Clark. to the Chargers, and he's got Antonio Gates. And then Zach Ertz, when he was the offensive coordinator in Philadelphia, 
Look at those faces. That is a fantastic way to move the ball up and down the field. Big targets. And without a running back, you don't have to rely as much maybe on those tight ends to be the blocking guys that you need. You need them to be pass catchers in an offense like this. Yeah. I would also throw in Trey Burton, who was on the yes. team and through the Philly special, got a big contract with the Bears. Mm -hmm. Like, he does like yeah. the tight ends. Well, Angelani Woods used to be a quarterback, and so, mm -hmm. like, maybe a little trickery we mm -hmm. see going on with oh, the tight ends. I would love tonight. some trickery tonight. Yeah. They need Especially something. With, yeah, we need something. I'll bring a full circle. I'm going to talk Broncos running game, and Peter laid out the Melvin Gordon fumbling issues. Fumbling is a, is a mental, mental thing. Mm -hmm. It really is. Everybody knows the form. As a veteran, like, he, he is in his head about that. And I don't know if it's going to be because of that, because some other reason, but I, I, I'm looking for a hero to rise from the Broncos running game, and it is the newest guy on the block and one of the most respected veterans on this show for sure. Latavius Murray is a Bronco now. And let me just <laughs> promise you this, he's going to score a touchdown tonight. This is all he ever does. This is him back, a sixth round pick, back with the Oakland Raiders. Out of Central Florida. Central Florida, and he just, wow, he's six foot three, he's really good. Then he goes to Minnesota, yep. scores touchdowns, makes the Pro Bowl, is in the playoffs. Minnesota's like, oh, we love Latavius, but we're going to let you go. Now he's a Saint, taking a handoff from Taysom Hill. All he does, Score a touchdown. So he had a long career with the Saints, right? Nope. Then he's on to the Ravens, taking handoffs from Lamar. Guys, he can't make it up. He scores a touchdown, a long one. So he settles home in Baltimore. Nope. Then he's moving on to the Saints. He's getting a handoff last week. Guys, this is in London. They picked him up and said, you want to get on a plane to London? He jumps right in and scores a touchdown. So New Orleans has a guy, right? Denver says, we need someone. They sign him this week off the Saints practice squad. And we're like, we're going to put you in the game on Thursday on a short week. And you were in London last week. That's about that trip. It's yeah. incredible. Last week, he's scoring a touchdown in London for the Saints. Tonight, I, I guarantee he will be scoring a touchdown tonight on Thursday Night Football for the Broncos. And just to finish this thing and just give it our little bow. There is no one better for the locker room. There is no one better for the huddle. And if you want proof of that, here's Latavius Murray. Not scoring a touchdown, but sitting five years ago with Peter Strager, myself, and Will Selva debating Godfather versus Goodfellas and taking up for the Godfather. Go ahead. This is our guy. <laughs> 72, we have the Godfather that comes out, okay? 18 years later, you have the good fellas. <laughs> hey, you don't get the third good fellas. without Jerry West. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, this is business. This is not personal. Luca Brasi. Yes! Nervous to go up there and talk to the Godfather. Nervous, rehearsing his speeches. <laughs> Kyle, I want you to rehearse your speeches before you talk to me. That's the respect <laughs> that I deserve. Peter, you're the NFL outsider, aren't you? You're the outsider. NFL insider, aren't you? Own. You're, the, you're the rat, right? Yeah. Kyle? Kyle, how do you pick a movie that ends up with the rat as the main guy, huh? Uh-huh. He had takes on Peter, on Henry Hill. I'm going to say this again. That is a professional running back. Wherever he goes, he performs. Loves movies. Peeling an orange. Lo just peeling he was, I think he was trying to do the Don Corleone thing. We couldn't stick the landing. He will tonight. Latavius Murray will score a touchdown tonight. Watch. That is incredible. I love that. And the words. It's amazing. He's the best.